Ryan Doyle in for Michael Corrin this evening. A Hooters waitress fired for wanting to cover up her brain surgery scar. A teacher with a rather interesting resignation letter. It must be time for the moral maze. Chantel Jose joins us from Campaign Life Coalition. Chantel, a lot of stuff to get to this week. I know. It's been a weird, weird week, especially in the U.S., it started off with a Missouri waitress over at Hooters, a lady named Sandra Lupo. She started about five years ago in the Hooters franchise, and you know how it is. You know, it's all Never about... been. I mean, but we've all seen a Hooters lady. We all know I hear the what wings are great. Say. I actually heard they're pretty bad. They say food comes second to impeccable service, according to their own their own uh, mandate there. So she, uh, one of the waitresses had a little bit of a brain surgery, so they had to shave really close to the head. Um, and the manager visited her at the hospital like a good manager would and said, you know, don't worry about it. Come back to work, you know, and we'll see you there. She said, okay, she can't afford a wig. Apparently, uh, she's claiming that they cost between a couple hundred to a thousand dollars. She couldn't afford one. Uh, she went to work anyway, and the manager said that human resources had told her she had to wear a wig or she could not work. Uh, so she found some kind of wig. It was irritating her recovery. She said, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to wear headscarves and that sort of thing. Apparently, they cut back her hours so much so that she had to quit herself um, and she doesn't fall under unemployment. She is now uh, suing Hooters for um, discrimination against a so-called disability. Mm -hmm. And it's breaking another mandate that uh, Missouri has, and that is in regards to employers forcibly removing staff by, make, you know, lacking hours for them to afford staying there anymore. And then, you know, they quit themselves and that's how they can get rid of these individuals. Let me ask you, though. I mean, I'll play the devil's advocate here. Sure. Uh, if you get hired for your good looks and perhaps you've got breasts that are you know, willing to be on display, yeah. let's say, uh, do you not run the risk of being a hypocrite for complaining that if you don't look the same, you're, you're getting fired or your hours are reduced? And it's it's that's that's kind of the position that I sort of see as well. I mean, when you go into that workforce, they make you sign a paper that says you are fully aware of the sexual innuendo that you will receive. It is part of your job. So you're going to have to accept that. And they have a very, very strict policy in their manual. No headbands. Uh, no weird haircuts, no bizarre colors. You're not going to put a scrunchie in your hair. You knew that before you started, and I understand disabilities and illnesses come in any job. Um, they could have done something, though, to accommodate the request because it was short term. It wasn't going to be prolonged. Uh, they could have done something for her to give her some time off, or even, I mean, would it have been that bad to lay the girl off? At least she would have collected unemployment and she wouldn't have filed for the lawsuit. Uh, so, I mean, it's a little bit of a Sticky situation there. All right, let's go from that story to a story that I actually, I, I like what this woman did. She had a mastectomy, a double mastectomy, where she lost both of her breasts. Uh, she's an Ottawa lady, and she went with a full tattoo that she displayed to the world. Yeah, I mean, it's one of these stories that uh, really show a woman's strength. Um, she had three types of cancer since she was 11 years old. She comes out of it, and she takes a beautiful picture of a tattoo that comes across her breast. Now, tell me something. Do you know Facebook's policy on nudity? <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm familiar with it, it not because of myself, but so others, of course. so vague. I mean, they say, you know, we want to cherish people's family memories. So if you have a picture of you breastfeeding your child, that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Michelangelo's, uh, you know, naked photo, naked sculptures, are, that's okay. Uh, but there's a little bit of a vague line when it gets to beyond that. Um, so in the past, February especially of this year, another woman, uh, same sort of story, double mastectomy, uh, had both breasts removed. Let's put a giant tattoo there. Beautiful tattoo the same way. Um, it was removed twice, actually, and Facebook kind of went back and forth on what they decided with it. Uh, they haven't removed this picture yet. I don't know. What do you think about nudity well, in that I, case? I think in this case, I mean, it, there's nothing to... Listen, I think the feminine form is beautiful, whether she has breasts or no breasts. Mm. I think, uh, you know, it's fantastic that she's got the courage to do this. Facebook should look at these things and, and make it that, you know, this is part of who they are. They're sharing the world's stories as opposed to trying to censor everything. I know. But I mean, like, I mean, you know, guy gets a, a prostate exam. Where are we going to show off what happens after that? I mean, I can I can see um some of the potential problems with it, but I think we need to take it with the intent of what this woman had. And, and I agree with you. It needs to show, you know, one of those kind yeah, of life changing stories. Everybody should have a look at this and understand the courage it took. Yeah. Uh, what about, speaking of courage, what about this teacher down in the United States? He decides, I'm resigning and I'm going to take the whole education system down with me. Do you think it was courage, though? What happened was this teacher um, is completely opposed to what the education system has turned into in New York. You know, it's all about standardized testing and mm -hmm. we've sold our students to this sort of system and, and we've lacked 
impact kind of the life of education and, and it should be, you know, part of the whole life of a student. And so this teacher, um, age of 62, comes out and he says, you know, after all these years of teaching, I'm quitting. And it's not because that I have left teaching, teaching no longer exists. And that's what he's claiming has happened because the way that our system, their system especially, the standardized testing works, uh, there's no independence for a teacher to really live out the learned experience right. and encourage its students in a way that uh, he would have wished. But rather than changing the system, he decides to retire, or reti early retire, leave his position. Uh, turns out, though, he wants to come back as a supply teacher. I don't know what that means. I don't know what he then is trying to make as a statement. He's probably addicted to the money, but OK. I know. So I mean, I wonder what exactly his point is. I, I, do you think that it's really courage to leave your position, which you do see as kind of failing? Well, no, here, here's my take on it. I think the idea is that you have a teacher inside the system. Uh, you know, change comes from within, not to get all Barack Obama on everybody, but change <laughs> does come th from within. If you have the power inside your particular school to change the way it's being done, to break down, say, the factory system of education that he's arguing against, do it within the school. You're sort of gutless in a way when you decide to drop a bomb in your resignation letter yeah. and don't really do anything when you when you had the power to do so. And then returning to it. I mean, it's kind of a little bit of a weird situation there. I mean, students are coming out and saying what a great teacher he was, and they're giving him a lot of credit for the things that he had done as a teacher. I don't know if his resignation will have as much of an impact. I don't know if it's really going to affect the way standardized testings are done. I mean, I, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Well, the one thing I can tell you about the American system being pretty familiar with it, it is broken. It needs to be fixed. Uh, I would like to see more teachers within the system come forward and talk about exactly uh, what the problems are with exactly. it. Exactly. Chantelle, I appreciate the time. Thank you.